Once upon a time, there was a merchant named Ruslan who devoted his life to traveling to sell his goods to all sorts of people imaginable. Though he did not care much for wealth, he wanted to take care of the thing most precious he possessed, which was, of course... Anastasia? Anastasia? I, I need to speak with you. Anastasia? <laughs> Excuse me, I, I'm not sure I know you. I'm looking for the little girl I know as my daughter, not a lovely young lady such as yourself. Have you seen her? Father, please, I'm already 17. <laughs> well, you never stop being that dear little girl. There's not a thing you can do about it. Thankfully, you haven't lost your sweetness. Oh, don't be too sure. You've been away from home for so long that, well, for all you know, I've been sneaking out to cavort with young men. But of course, only the men of which you would never approve. Well, that must leave your options wide open because there are no men of which I approve. <laughs> Will you tell me about these precarious adventures? Well, bad decisions make for the best stories, you know. But there are just so many. I'm afraid you don't have time before you have to leave again. You are a secret scoundrel, <laughs> just like your mother. Are you getting ready to travel again? Yes, and I'm afraid this will be my longest journey. I know your life hasn't been easy because of my absence. To show my thanks for your patience, I, I want to bring you a gift. What kind of gift? <laughs> Anything you desire from anywhere. Oh, there are some wonderful things out there in the world, Anastasia. In my travels, I've seen dazzling gold and silver ornaments, precious stones that shine so bright you need to squint to look at them, Long black furs, rare necklaces of pearl. I, I'd be happy to bring you anything you wish. Well, those all sound wonderful, but I know what I want above anything else. And what is that? I don't need gold or silver, furs or precious stones. Instead, I just wish that you would stay home. I miss you too much when you're away. Every time I leave is more difficult than the last. But I need to provide for you, so I, I don't have a choice. How about this? I know how much you love to keep flowers. I once heard of a scarlet flower so beautiful there could be no equal to it in the entire world. What if I were to find that and bring it to you? That does sound rather wonderful. <laughs> finding flowers is easy, but finding the most beautiful is another matter. Oh, but how I would love to bring that to you. Well, if you must leave, have a safe journey. 
Please come back to me safe and happy. I will miss you every moment. Let me tell you something my grandmother once told me. If you have something to say and cannot tell those whom you love the most, tell it to the wind. <coughs> the wind? What could that possibly do? <laughs> well, the wind can travel farther and faster than any person can. It will always listen and will never judge what you have to say. It can carry any whisper any distance. A whisper on the wind will eventually find the ear of whom you're trying to reach. Well, if that's true, keep your ears open. I might have something to send you with every quest. With those words, Ruslan left his sweet Anastasia and departed on his long journey to lands far away. He traveled across the seas to many unknown but wonderful countries and kingdoms he had never seen before. With every new place he visited, he searched to fulfill the promise he made to Anastasia. He saw many beautiful and unique flowers, but he knew that none of them would qualify as the most beautiful or most unique flower in the entire world. For the first time in many years, Fortune smiled on his business endeavors, and he was able to trade his wares very properly. Just as Ruslan reached the farthest point he had ever been, he was attacked by robbers. He fled alone into the depths of a nearby dark forest. Ruslan was thankful to escape and wandered ever deeper until the forest became so dense that it seemed almost impossible to walk through it. All was still and silent. How much farther can I go? Can I even turn back? But he had come too far and the forest was too dense behind him. Straight ahead was the only option. Just when he couldn't help but think about giving up, he pushed aside two branches, and in front of him stood an opulent mansion. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? there? He was only met with the sound of his own echo. Uh, please, I I'm lost and looking for help. Out of nowhere, the playing of enchanting music broke through the silence. What, what is happening? Come from. It does feel wonderful to sit. This house is full of spirits. I hope they're not evil spirits. <laughs> for this incredible meal. Hmm. I might need to lie down for a bit. sometimes unpredictable imagination could not contrive the wonders that he was seeing. How she would love this place. His dream was so vivid that he believed she was actually there with him. 
Uh, Anastasia? Anastasia? <sighs> if anyone can hear me, thank you for your hospitality. I'm sure there's more here to enjoy, but I need to be getting home to my daughter now. But how to get home? Perhaps there would be a path in the back through the gardens. He passed through a labyrinth of corridors. Whoa. And eventually found his way through to the gardens. There he was met with the same splendor as inside. Vivid flowers with rare fragrances blossomed, and plump, bright fruit hung from the trees. Almost by coincidence, his gaze fixed upon a brightly lit area. There a flower grew, a red flower. He knew that this scarlet flower was so beautiful that none could equal it in the whole wide world. As he came closer, the sweet fragrance overtook him. This, this is it. This is the flower. My gracious host knew my every other whim. He, he must have provided this as well. What are you? Oh. Oh, what are you? I am the master of this house. How dare you pluck that precious flower from my garden? My only comfort was to gaze on it and smell its perfume. But you have now deprived me of the one true delight of my life. Please, I, I didn't know. How was I to know? It is I who received you as a welcome guest. I who have given you food and drink and a bed to sleep on. And this is how you repay me for my hospitality? Please, I I'm begging for your mercy. You will find none here. So die for the wrongs you have done to me. Pity on me. I, I never would have taken it if I knew what it meant to you. If I knew anyone even lived here. I have a daughter whom I love and love all things. I, I promised her I would bring her a scarlet flower so beautiful there could be no equal to it in the entire world. I, I was only thinking of her. Please, let me repay you with as much gold as you desire. <laughs> There must be something, anything. I need to get home and see my daughter once again. Hmm. Perhaps there is one way for you to save yourself. I will let you go home unharmed and give you the scarlet flower if you send your daughter in your place. I will do her no harm, and she will have total freedom within these walls. I am tired of living alone. But what if she will not come? Do you expect me to send her by force? I do not want a prisoner! She must come out of her own will, out of love for you. If she will not come, you must return yourself and accept your fate. If she agrees, how will she find her way? I don't even know how it got here. Take this enchanted ring. Whomever wears it on the little finger of his right hand shall find himself wherever he needs to be. I give you three days and three nights before you or she must return to me. I will go. Remember. Three days and three nights. Don't make me come to you. Ruslan did not hesitate. He took the ring, placed it on the little finger of his right hand, and immediately found himself face to face with his own home. Anastasia? Anastasia, my oh. dearest, I have missed you more than anything. You will not believe the things I've seen. Oh, 
Father, is business still slow? Don't worry, riches come and go. No, no, it's, it's not that. I, I was actually quite successful. I made enough profit to sustain us for quite some time. What is bothering you? We, we have a lot to talk about, but that, that can wait. For now, please, take this. You find this? Oh, thank you. <laughs> No flower could be as sweet or as beautiful as you, my dearest. So, let's talk. Ruslan proceeded to tell her of his travels, the forests, the bandits, the magic house, and the monster. And then, and then he gave me this magic ring, which brought me straight back home to you. And so one of us must return to him? Either I go or he will kill you. <coughs> yes, and I'm afraid that if neither of us goes, He'll come back here and kill us both. No, no, Father, I won't go. I will go to the monster of the mid forest and I'll live in his mansion. No, how can I let you do that? How can I just send you to him? You took this flower from me. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be in this dilemma. If you go, you will be killed. But the monster gave his word not to harm me. That at least gives us a chance to see each other again. But how will I live out my bitter days without seeing your face or hearing your voice? You're irreplaceable to me. Cemeteries are full of irreplaceable people. <laughs> from what I've, if there's any reason for optimism from what I've seen, you live in unimagin unimaginable luxury. I don't care about luxury. I will not fear the monster. I will serve him faithfully and we will see each other again. With those words, she placed the ring on the little finger of her right hand and instantly found herself in the doors of the mansion. All around her was finery that well exceeded her father's descriptions. Hello? Sir, my name is Anastasia and I've come in place of my father. I'm at your service, sir. I've brought with me the scarlet flower. I understand it means a great deal to you. I will return the flower so you can enjoy it once more. She walked to the knoll where her father had been. As soon as her hand drew close to the earth, the flower magically reunited itself to its stalk. Sir, the flower has been returned and it looks to be more healthy and beautiful than ever. Perhaps you will not be angry and show us mercy? You have returned the scarlet flow, and have helped me more than you know. The voice had no direction, no source, and no end. It seemed to be everywhere, but at the same time it was nowhere at all. I am no master of yours, but consider me your obedient attendant. The music played sweetly, and Anastasia took stock of her new life. In this way, the time passed. New clothing, food, and fascinations were waiting for her every morning. And each day would end the same way, with a mysterious and doughty voice. Is my mistress content with her new house, her gardens, and her servants? Well, I'm grateful to you for everything you've given me. Every day I find something more amazing. But there is discontent in your voice. There's nothing I could wish for that you've not already imagined for me. I know you're somehow here, but I feel very alone. There's no one to talk to, no one to keep me company. There are many servants in these chambers, but you cannot see or hear them. With me, they guard you night and day. I know this, and I'm grateful, but luxury and safety are no replacement for friendship. Haven't you ever wanted companionship over property or prominence? Good night, Berlin. This was not good enough for Anastasia. She sensed a kind soul and was determined to reach him. Every day from that point forth, she would ask, even beg to see him. The monster continu continued to refuse, but he drew nearer and nearer each day. Please, today must be the day. <coughs> Your words have been so kind, but how can I really know you without looking into the eyes of the one who says that? Please, 
Do not ask to see me. I am loathsome and horrible beyond what you could imagine. Should you see me in all my repulsive hideousness, you shall hate the unfortunate thing that I am. It would drive you away from me. I will not be frightened. Besides, what do you have to lose in frightening me? I've already given you my word that I would not leave. Do you believe me? Of course, I believe you. Now my father taught me to look people in the eyes when speaking to them. Yes, if I cannot look at you, I cannot speak to you anymore. Oh, come now! <laughs> That's not even fair. I'm, I'm trying to spare you. I think I'll go to the window and see what the birds have to tell oh, Don't be ridiculous. You have to understand. Oh, fascinating. I once heard of a bird who only likes to eat red flowers. <laughs> excitement, she ran to the gardens and found her favorite arbor. Today is the day. Show yourself without fear, please. Remember, you are to say, show yourself to me, my faithful attendant. I will not, because I don't wish to see any faithful attendant. I wish to see my friend. So show yourself to me, faithful friend. This took the monster by surprise. No one had considered him a friend before, nor did he think it was even possible. Are you there, dear friend? <clears throat> your constant, <clears throat> your constant servant, your constant friend is here. <gasps> Anastasia was ashamed. She said she would not be afraid. She knew she must not be afraid, and yet she was afraid. No, I'm so very sorry. I didn't know what to expect. Please show yourself to me again. Do you know what you are doing? Can't you see what I am? I know I have nothing to be afraid of. Please forgive me. <coughs> Can we try one more time? Come to me, faithful friend. From that point on, time passed pleasantly. She would visit him every day, and never once did she show any fear of his presence. Occasionally, their conversations would inspire the topic of Anastasia's father, and a concealed grief would surface. I can see that you miss him. You should go and visit him. I gave my word that I would stay here with you. I promised. You do not need to ask my permission. The gold ring is always available to you. Just place it on the little finger of your right hand, and you shall find yourself in your father's home. Oh, you don't know what it'll mean for me to see him again. <coughs> what it'll mean for him to see me. I'll visit and then I'll return to you. But do this for me. Do you remember the scarlet flower? Of course I remember it. I look at it every day. I want you to take it with you. Take it with me? 
No, but you love that flower. It brings you such peace. It used to. Now it is you that brings me peace. Please, bring it with you, and it will keep you safe as I have. But return the flower within three days and three nights, or it will die. You have no idea what this means to me, dear friend. I promise I'll return with the flower before the end of the third day. Thank you for this. such an evil thing just let you go. Oh, no, he's not evil. He's actually very kind and gentle, and he's become my greatest friend. <clears throat> I admire him. Hey, you admire him? How is that possible? Nevertheless, welcome home. I never thought this day would come. Anastasia told her father how she lived in the palace of the monster of the forest. She told him everything from the beginning to the end. The first day passed like an hour, the second like a minute, and on the third, it was time for her to return. But you can't go back now, Owen. Why would you think about returning? I promised I'd return in three days before the scarlet flower died. But, but has he become more important to you than your family, than, than your father, who raised you and loves you? You will always be the most important to me. But is that how I should repay my kind and gentle friend? I couldn't live with myself if I caused a scarlet flower to die. Well, I admire your loyalty and your dignity. A true reflection on whoever raised you. <laughs> but please, one more night. <coughs> if, we give the, if we give the flower some water and sunlight, it'll last one more day. I don't know. I, I made a promise. Now, to return before the flower dies. If we care for the flower, no promise will be broken. Besides, I'm old and probably don't have too many years left anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess if we take good care of the flower, I can stay one more night. But I need to return first thing in the morning. The two planted the flower in the best soil, gave it the purest water, and set it in the house with the brightest light. When the end of the third day arrived, Anastasia could feel a pain in her heart, as if a hand were pulling it from her body. But the flower was well cared for, so she spent one final night in the company of her father. When morning came, Anastasia found the scarlet flower looking dull and lifeless. How could this happen? I need to return immediately. I, I don't understand. We did everything we could. But surely a few more hours won't hurt. I'm sorry, but no. I stretched the promise I made, and now I've broken it. I can only hope he forgives me. Despite her father's protests, Anastasia placed the ring on the little finger of her right hand and found herself once more in the mansion. Where are you, my kind friend? I've returned. No answer came. The silence around her matched the silence from the monster. No birds sang, the spring was not rippling, and no music played throughout the chambers. When she reached the knoll where the scarlet flower had once bloomed in its splendor, she found the monster. The vine of the flower was clasped in its paw. Oh, there you are. What a silly place to sleep. I'm back. Please, wake up. I have so much to tell you. She tried again to awaken him and grasped his hairy paw. It was at that moment that she realized the monster, her friend, no longer breathed. He was as dead as the scarlet flower. No. No, you cannot leave me like this. Please. The flower. The life of the flower and your own life are one and the same. This is why you 
protected it so much. You loved it. When I left, you gave me your own life to keep in return. Have I killed you both? When you have something to say, you cannot tell those whom you love the most. Tell it to the wind. whisper any distance or time. The petals caught the breeze, and her whispers were carried off into the unknown. until a lady will come to love me in my fearsome state. Only then will the curse be lifted and I will once more be able to become myself. <coughs> I have lived as that monster, wishing only for you. You alone loved me, repulsive as I was. And for that, so much more. I, I hope that you would stay with me here.
favorite time of the year, when my silvery beams can cut through the air so effortlessly. Perfection. I know those birds. Soon spring in all her glory will come gliding in on the backs of those swans and cranes. Well, it has been a particularly cold winter, and she will have much work to do. for my daughter. All throughout winter, he keeps her concealed deep in the forest groves in his frosty palace. It is because of her that I am afraid to stand up against her father, old Frost. I can't fight against him, so y'all have to suffer the cruelties of a winter. <laughs> it's my own fault. Greetings, fair spring. I see you are providing us with your vibrancy early this year. Hello, Frost. How is our daughter, Snow Maiden? Ah, she remains as you left her. However, you would not believe how she has grown. She wants to understand why you come and go and why she stays here. Her curiosity and independence terrify me. <laughs> you know nothing of a girl's heart. She is 16 now, and if she wants to know the world, you should set her free to go wherever she chooses. I keep her here to keep her alive. What if the sun were to see her? She would melt away. You know this. Yes, but I also know that keeping her alive isn't necessarily living. Well, then what would you suggest? You have no time to guard her. Look around you. Look at the work that must be done. I once heard of two humble country folk who are childless despite their desire for a son or a daughter. Let us put Snow Maiden in their care. They live on the western border of your forest and the northern shore of my lake, so we could continue to watch over her. Old Frost considered this, but could not think of a compelling argument against it. The parents agreed, and Frost returned to his hibernation while Spring prepared to tend to her duties. The next morning, while it was still early, the old couple was out walking. Spring was in the air, and the old man was in good spirits. <laughs> Did you hear a chickadee? Springtime, <coughs> springtime. He's been waiting five months to sing that song. I'm surprised he remembers the words. Chickadee dee dee. <coughs> dee dee dee. It's funny how they're always out gathering seeds long before the other birds can get to them. Kind of selfish if you ask me. Maybe he should be singing Chicken me me me. <laughs> Come on now, I'm tired of carrying these sticks. When was the last time we built a snowman? Because that will burn well in the stove. 
I'm now able to find, I'll fi find some sticks for her arms and you can find some leaves for her hair. Or I can find an acorn for her brain so she can take after you. <laughs> or I could find the most beautiful blue pebbles from the stream for her eyes so she could take after you. Have you no shame? What if people saw us playing such childish games? They'll just be jealous that we're having more fun. <laughs> to our home? Thank you, I will. Maybe I can help you as well. Before Snow Maiden could accompany us, she paused and turned back. She whispered as if she were speaking to the wind. Farewell, mother. Farewell, father. It could have been the spring breeze shedding the weight of winter, but I was almost sure I heard voices from the forest calling back. by the day, with one rare exception. What? A black storm cloud burst, showering the village of hailstones as big as buckets. It was one of the largest I had ever seen. We were afraid it would tear our house down. While we grew anxious, Snow Maiden's spirits were lifted. She ran out to catch the hailstones as if they were precious gems. But as soon as the hailstones melted, she burst into tears so bitter, you'd think a sister was mourning her own lost brother. Great idea. Go and greet Summer. You should not stay here with us old folks. Uh, go enjoy the sunshine. Where are they playing? I think I heard them in the meadows picking flowers. Then I won't join them. They can join me in the forest if they wish. I can't bear to see her like this. What should we do? What can we do? Snow Maiden has been such a blessing to us, but have we been any kind of blessing to her?
but I'm not the forest. Then you must be the wind. Before this, I've only heard the wind sing low and mournful songs. <laughs> I've heard those songs too, but I'm not the wind either. May I have the pleasure of meeting the girl with a voice as pure as the first snowfall? So, you are not the wind after all. <laughs> Everyone has heard the wind, but no one has heard our duet. <coughs> what is your name? I am Snow Maiden. Snow Maiden? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never met a Snow Maiden before. What are you doing out here in the forest? This is the closest I can come to feeling at home. I don't really know why. You don't know why? <coughs> I know why. You do, do you? <laughs> Tell me then. Uh, well, the forest is where the snow escapes when it gets too warm outside. It melts into the ground where it's consumed by the trees. The melted snow hides deep inside the trees where it's protected from the sun until it's safe to be out in the open again. If your name is Snow Maiden, you must like to be here for safety. I'm well, by the way. I spend most of my time in the forest, too, collecting mushrooms and roots and other tasty things that only grow under the cover of trees. Do you ever play out in the meadows with the others? Nah, in the meadows are fine, but it's more peaceful here. I'm glad to have met you, Lel. From that day forward, Lel would often visit Snowman. Together they explored the forest and all it had to offer. Lel taught Snowman which mushrooms were safe to eat, but more importantly, which mushrooms were not safe to eat. Snowman made Lel chains of mountain bells, lace, slippers, and ferns. He would always bring his flute, and together they would dance and sing and play with the audience of Chipmunk's mouths. Although Lel came to love Snowman dearly, he sensed no real warmth in her heart. Her love was as innocent and simplistic as a child's. There was another girl in town named Anna. Snow Maiden had played with her many times, but Anna had become jealous of Lel's fondness for Snow Maiden. One day, Anna couldn't take it anymore. She decided to focus her sights on turning Lel's head from Snow Maiden once and for all. Oh, Lel, I'm, I'm so glad I found you here alone. Anna! I didn't think I'd ever see you out here in the woods. It's terribly cold and damp. I can't see how you spend so much time here. But never mind. I wanted to see you. Well, there's a first for everything, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth, I'm concerned about you. Why do you spend so much time with Snow Maiden? Snow Maiden? Well, she's sweet. She loves the forest. She knows the most wonderful songs. She's too strange. She won't come to the village. She won't come to the meadow. And, and lately, she's been spending all of her time here with you. Do you even know where she came from? It doesn't matter where she came from. It only matters that she's here now. Can you really see her as more than your unexplainable friend from the forest? She is pretty, but I hope you don't think she's the only pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> is she the only one who enjoys your company? Does she make you feel warm? You need to see that my heart is overflowing with love. Have you ever felt this warmth from Snow Maiden? You have been cold for a very long time. This is real warmth. This is love. The young man was soon overcome by Honest Boy. He believed that the love that filled his own heart had found its match. Well, where are you? I have... Uh, Snow Maiden, please, understand. Anna's heart, it's warm and full. It's much more like my own. Yours is... not. It's cold. Please. Understand. With tears glistening on her pale cheeks, Snow Maiden fled into the depths of the forest. She did not stop 
until she came to a deep lake that was mantled by pink white lilies in the deepest portion of the forest. Mother! Mother, please come speak with me! Hello, my dearest one. What brings you to me today? never stop loving you. Well, I could not possibly be happier. But summer is almost here. The sun's rays frighten me. Please, let's go deeper into the forest. But the sun is warm and wonderful. My father used to say, turn your face to the sun, and all your shadows will fall behind you. But <laughs> it is the shadows where I have to stay. Please, don't let me fall behind you. As they were speaking, a radiant sun rose higher in the cloudless sky, dispersing the mist of dawn and melting the last traces of snow. We can't hide forever from the light of day. Come with me. A ray of sunshine fell on Snow Maiden. The snow Maiden? What's happening? So love for a moment, however brief it may be. Dearer to me than a loveless life. Well, play your flute for me one last time. I'm such a fool. What can I do to help you? Please, play. Putting the flute to his trembling lips, he began to play a haunting and mournful tune. As she listened, tears streamed down her cheeks, the color drained from her face, and her feet melted away beneath her. 
until all that remained was her crown of water lilies. Snow Maiden. Snow Maiden. Please forgive me. You asked me to protect you from the sun, but I didn't listen. Now you're gone with the last of the snow. Please. Please. Forgive me. And no one heard his cry except for a greedy mother in a lily mantled lake and old frost in the northern snows. Their grieving, along with the melancholy pitches of Lel's pipe, blended with the sheer mist of vapor that was all that was left to Snow Maiden, and in no time was lost to the wind. and I just started singing it. <laughs> Why in the world would you sing a song about Jabba Fofi? 
I, I, I don't know. It, it's fun to say, I guess. Jabafofi! <laughs> <laughs> Nobody had actually seen Jabal Mopi before. 
Yeah, if I could get close enough and if it's still, still, we can use the water. Well, how do we make it be still? If I did the only thing he could think to do.
the other side of the world, across the ocean, over the mountains, and through the densest thickets, a prosperous people thrived. It was quite the center of activity. They were successful in the hunt, prosperous in trade, and built tremendous temples. But the neighboring villages were jealous of the prosperity of our people. It requires strong leadership to keep the people happy and the vengeful neighbors at bay. Wise and strong leadership, imparted by my husband, Kabul, governor, protector, and chief. I'm thankful to have you as chief and, and as an older brother, Kabul. <laughs> You've served our nation well, and uh, as your successor, I hope to continue the success for our people. Thank you, Kairama. But continue to work and continue to improve. I fear you are still too eager and desire too much. You must remember, to be a great leader, you must work with and for your people, not above or in spite of them. But I still want... I still find myself longing for a child. I have prayed with all my heart, and yet my prayers have gone unanswered. Kabul, what a blessing it would be to raise a son and heir to your position. If a child is meant to be, then it will be. If it is not meant to be, then consider Kairuma as the one to instruct and nurture. Oh, but how quickly they would cast me aside if they had a son of their own. <laughs> Am I not as wise and strong as Kabul? They'll see in time. They will see. Yatsum and Kabul continued to wish, hope, and pray for a child. But time continued to move forward. Time is like trying to contain water in your hands. Clasp it so tightly you believe it could not possibly escape. When you open your hands, you realize it has somehow slipped between your fingers. But the slowest growing trees tend to yield the best fruit. And although patience can be bitter, its reward is sweet. Look, Pablo, have you ever seen a bird like this? It is by far the largest and most vibrant I've ever seen. It must be a sign. There is no doubt this is a sign from the heaven. One's heard that a bird like this can be a messenger of the gods. Your prayers have been heard and your waiting is over. You shall have the son like you have always wanted, and like this bird, your child shall be extraordinary. child. At last a healthy and striking boy was brought into the world. Everyone was blissfully happy and could see the future of their nation in his eyes. Everyone except Kairuma. It would now be much harder for him to remain Kabul's successor. Time sped to a sprint as Kakul grew older. He became quite a handsome and capable young man. He was quick of mind and seemed to excel at any task he was given. As a boy, he would spend long hours with his father, studying the stars and learning the stories they had to tell. Like all boys, Kakul also learned the art of warfare. He learned to make his own spears, bows, and arrows. Every arrow he made was as strong as the boy himself. <laughs> Soon it came time for Kakul to take his place among the men of his nation. A nomad tribe was attempting to make war, and Kabul, Kairuma, and Kakul went to fight. Chief who had brought them so much prosperity. 
so much wisdom. And so much guidance. And so much love. devastated over the passing of Kabul, but Kakul's bravery and heroism did not go unnoticed. Every day there was more talk of what a great chief he could become. <coughs> it was time for an official successor to be chosen, and according to custom, the new chief could be anyone in the departed chief's family. So Kakul and Kairuma were summoned to the elders. Kairuma, Kakul. The elders have decided that one of you will take Kabul's place as the next ruler. However, based on your virtues, we were unable to decide. Instead, we will give you both a challenge. Upon hearing this, Garuma was furious. Kakul was nervous. Most challenges test physical strength and ability. Since Kukul is favored by the gods, how can I possibly hope to beat him? The elders are unfair. Kairuma is older and has much more experience with everything. I must do everything I can. The elders know best. This test is not like one we have ever seen. We will each be given a seed to cultivate. The one who grows the biggest and most impressive plant from the seed will become the next ruler. Ka Kairuma could not believe his luck. He'd always had a successful hand with the soil. And the elders knew of Kairuma's advantage. But Kakul accepted the decision. Good luck to you and your seedling, Uncle. <coughs> Thank you for teaching me what you know about the care of plants. You're welcome, Kukul. But I've not taught you everything. Kairuma was confident with his advantage, and both young men set off to care for their seeds. Kukul planted his seed in the best pot he could find, set it in the sun, and watered it every day. But as time passed, there was no sign of his seed growing. He tried more water. But that did nothing. He tried a bigger pot. plant doing, Kukul? You'd not believe how full mine is. I, I hope you're having as much luck. What should I do, Mother? If my plant does not grow, then I will have no chance to become ruler. If that is the case, then that is what was meant to be. <coughs> you need to do your best and respect the wishes of the elders. Uh, Kukul, when the time comes to present our plants, could you carry mine from my house? It's so big, I don't think I can carry it myself. The time had come to present the fully grown plants to the elders. Kairuma's was a sight to behold. It was one of the biggest he'd ever grown, and was covered in leaves and flowers and, and fruits. <laughs> uh, thank you, Kukul. Shall we go and retrieve your plant now? My seed did not sprout and nothing grew. I'm so ashamed. I I'm sure you'll make a great ruler. Welcome, Kairuma and Kukul. This is an exciting day. 
You have completed your task, and today we choose our new chief. Kairuma. I have never seen such an impressive plant. You must have taken excellent care of it. Thank you, Elder. Uh, yes, I, I worked very hard to care for the plant, and, well, I've been blessed by the gods in working with plants. Kakul, where is your plant? Did you lose the seed I gave you? I didn't lose it. I planted it. I, I cared for it every day, but nothing grew. I see. Well, then it is decided. I am proud to declare that our new chief will be Kakul. You liar! You said whoever grew the biggest and most beautiful plant from the seed you gave us would be chief. Indeed, I did say that. However, both of these seeds had been cooked. Neither of them could have grown into anything. Kairuma, you have not been honest with your task. Uh, I, I didn't. The, but, but, but. <laughs> You have been honest. And the first step towards greatness is to be honest. With his wisdom, temperament, and of course his charm feather, there were many days of peace and prosperity throughout the land. Everyone was happy with Kakul, except. Kairuma! Uncle, where are you? What do you want, Kakul? Hello, Uncle. I'm going on a hunt tomorrow and was wondering if you'd like to join me. Why me? Surely now you have more important people to join you? Please, Uncle. I hate to see you like this. Can, can we end this rivalry? Please, if you join me tomorrow, I will give you the best spoils from our hunt. Not a day had passed since Kairuma had not had an envious thought against his nephew. His contempt had only worsened, and holding on to jealousy for such a long time can cause a person, even a potentially good person, to do some unlikely things. I will see you in the morning, Kukul. Day turned to evening and gave way to night. Kukul was pleased with this new opportunity to make amends with his uncle, and those happy thoughts escorted him into the land of dreams. Good morning, Kukul. Are you ready for our adventure? I have been up all night with excitement for today. Good morning, Uncle. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised to hear you're so excited, but I don't think I can go with you today. Why not? Don't be silly. Look, it's, it's the perfect day. I know, but I seem to have lost something important. Oh, well, what have you lost? Can I help you find it? No! Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'm sure I can look for it when we return. I, I imagine we'll be okay for just today. Let's go.
The day was indeed absolutely perfect. The sun was shining. The wind was still. And the game was plentiful. The arrows flew straight. <laughs> Flawless. You must help me improve my shot sometime. And Kakul was enjoying the company of his uncle. He heard many endearing stories about his father he had never heard before. He was thrilled to mend a relationship that seemed almost destined for regret. His heart was content and happy, and he thought less and less about the missing feather as the day went on. Well, uncle, as promised, I will give you the best spoils from our hunt. Will you help me get it? Uncle? Kairuma! hiding place as the cool strength drained from his body. After one last breath of youth and promise, he fell into a bed of emerald grass. There he died, alone and betrayed. I never meant for it to come to this, Kukul. But it was always my right to rule. Why did you have to come along and ruin it? Why did you have to be so perfect? Who can compete with perfect? Rest well, nephew. But now, now begins the reign of the rightful chief. The forest normally a tireless source of noise and commotion, was deathly silent in reverence to the tragedy that had just fallen. Kairuma had stolen the life and promise of the former chief. The gods mourned the loss of their chosen blessed son and would not settle for him to be forgotten. The winds of change immediately began to blow and the earth gave a slight tremble. At that moment, Kukul's body turned to the color of the grass and his skin became feathers, but the blood of his chest remained a brilliant scarlet. By the time Kairuma left the thicket, the cool's arms had turned into wings, but all Kairuma could see was a glowing green bird, a long, long tail, and a scarlet chest. with her two sons, who were called Mosi and Manu. Mosi! Manu! Please hurry home with the harvest! Would you hurry? Sorry, Mosi, I'm doing my best. Oh, be more careful, would you? Someday I'm gonna be the emperor of this entire nation, and you'll be a servant in my household. <laughs> that is, if you weren't so useless. 
I would be happy to serve you. <laughs> You'd have no choice. <laughs> Why can't you be happy, Mosey? You're strong, handsome, and, and clever. Why are you so discontented? Because everyone's constantly telling me how great you are, how gifted you are, how perfect you are. They praise everything you do. I once heard that mother loves you more than me, and, and I can't take it anymore. When I'm emperor, everyone will see that your kindness is just weakness. I only want to be helpful. Oh, give me that. I'm going to die of old age waiting for you. Go back and pick up the rest of the crop. The family did not have much, but they kept a small but lush plot of land where they grew millet, sunflowers, yams, and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Manu loved to sing mm -hmm. and always sang as he worked. Some would say it was his singing that made his crops more bountiful than anyone else's. Well, hello, little Nyoka. It's okay, you're welcome here. You'll keep away any creatures who might spoil my vegetables. Thanks for the help. Why? What are you still doing in the garden? Mariama did not understand how Mosi treated Manu, and Manu was too considerate of his mother's feelings to complain. I'm sorry, Mother, that's my mistake. I thought I was supposed to- No matter. To... I have something very important to tell you and your brother. Mosi, please come to the garden! Mosi! 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 I, 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 I have the most exciting news. The messenger has just come from the great city. He said that the empress is looking for a husband. She declared that the most worthy sons of the land are to appear before her, and she will choose one to be the emperor. Emperor? I knew this opportunity would come for me. It would be such an honor for one of you to be chosen. Prepare yourselves for a trip to the great city. We'll leave tomorrow when the sun Thank rises. You, brother, it would be far too painful for both of us to leave you. Manu would surely grow depressed if he was away from you. I'm much stronger. Send me to the city and let poor Manu be happy here with you. It is up to the Empress to decide who is most worthy. <laughs> of course. I, I can't send you alone. You both must go. I... Let's go get ready. <sighs> this is my chance, Manu. The Empress will see my strength and worthiness. Get in my way and I will bury you. I'm sure the Empress will adore you, brother. <laughs> Mosley was far from satisfied with his mother's plan. He was determined to get every advantage when meeting the Empress. So that night, while everyone was asleep, Mosley quietly snuck out of the bed. never been alone in the jungle at night before, and with good reason. The jungle is a daunting place when it is lit only by the moon. But his greed to be the first to appear before the Empress drove him on.
Shut up! <laughs> Take your less. How much further is it to sing? Sick this jungle. <clears throat> Do you need any help finding your way? <laughs> An emperor acknowledges only those that please him. I will be emperor. I must be! Oh, I think I hear the river. The great city's just on the other side. <laughs> Manu awoke at the first light of dawn. He put on his finest clothes and imagined how his life could be changed forever. I can't believe I get to meet the Empress. I think I prefer to live here, though. I miss my garden and my little Nyoka friend. Manu! I am glad you are up. Have you seen your brother? No, I haven't seen him yet today. Wasn't he at breakfast? No, he's missing. I've been calling out for him. Well, he didn't say anything to me. Do you think he left early? I told him not to do that. I wanted us to travel together, and the forest is no place to be alone at night. That is my best guess as well. I suppose we will have to continue on as planned and hope we meet up with him. We will see Mosi soon enough, I'm sure. He He's tough and ambitious. I'm sure he just couldn't wait to go and impress the Empress. I hope you are right. But for now, are you ready to go and meet the Empress yourself? Yes, but I'm not sure what she'll see in me. Let's go. It is a beautiful day. <laughs> Remember, it is up to her alone to decide. Just be your normal, kind self, and you have nothing else to worry about. Hi. Well, hello. What are you doing out here all by yourself? Please. I'm so very hungry. Will you give me something to eat? Uh, 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 of course. Here, I, uh, I brought this yam. <laughs> <laughs> I did, but we'll be in the great city soon enough. I'll be fine. Please, take it. Who was that? I have no idea, but I hope she'll be okay up here by herself. Good afternoon. How are you today? Greetings, young one. Do you need any help finding your way? Uh, could you let us know if we're on the right route to the great city? We're going to meet the Empress. Ah, yes. I've heard about your summons from the Empress. You're on the right path, and it is only a little further. Thank you so much. Here, I, I have some extra sunflower seeds. Please, take them. Oh, thank you for being so kind to a stranger. I'm confident the Empress is going to find great favor with me. Thanks. But I'm not sure what she would find in me. Come hurry along. We're almost there. Mosi, are you okay? You look terrible. <laughs> Mother, I'm sorry I left in the middle of the night. The journey by myself was awful. But it's nothing compared to that. Thing. What kind of thing? Don't go in there! Mother, do not let him go in there! There's a great monster in there! A horrifying, terrible snake monster! It would have swallowed me alive if I had not run! A snake monster? Mm. I'm so glad you're okay. It's so don't you go in there! I have to go in there. Oh. The Empress knows what she's doing. Oh. Maybe it's some sort of test. Mosi, oh. stay here with Mother. Please, Manu, don't go in there. It's too horrible! Manu might be right. We need to trust that the Empress knows what she's doing. Manu, you are very brave for wanting to continue. I'll stay with Mosi. Please be careful and return to us safely. Hello? Your Highness. 
My name is Manu from the village of Lokoki. We heard of your summons and I'm here to meet you if you'll have me. I know who you are, Manu. You are most welcome here. <laughs> Little Nyoka. <laughs> My friend, I, I'm so happy to see you, but why are you here? Manu. I am the Empress. You, the, the, the Empress, but uh, how? You see, I am the Empress. When it came time for me to choose a husband, I knew I wanted the most worthy son of the land. So I changed myself into the little garden snake, the little Nyoka you knew, to learn the true worthiness of those whom I watched. Snakes always see you before you see them. You, however, noticed and befriended me, and for that you have my thanks. I, I, I don't know what to do, what to say. You do not have to do anything, Manu. You have already done everything. You see, I was also the hungry girl in the jungle whom you fed. And I was the old woman to whom you were polite. You have proved yourself to be the most worthy, and it would make me very happy if you would be my husband. The luckiest a person can be is to marry someone who is already a dear friend. <laughs> On the other side of the ocean, there was a poor but kind fisherman named Taro, who lived in a small village by the sea. One day, after a long and particularly unsuccessful day of fishing, he placed his nets on his shoulders like he always did, and made his way home. However, on this particular day, he noticed three noisy children from the village who were clearly up to something. Why did you come out of the sea? I think you did be right here. I think soap's all done for dinner. It's soap! Out the the soap. <laughs> As they got closer, Taro saw that the children were harassing a poor sea turtle that had crawled out of the sea and was trying to make its way back to the safety of the waves. Why? Hey, what are you doing? Don't be cruel. You should be ashamed. Why? Why should we, old man? We found him. He's ours. I want soup. <laughs> of it. <laughs> well, what has that turtle ever done to you? That could be another turtle's mother or sister. Don't you know that if she doesn't get back to the sea that she will die? Who cares if it dies? It's just a stupid turtle. Oh, just a... Well, surely you've heard of the Dragon King who rules the sea. They say his messenger is a turtle that is said to live for a thousand years. Now, you don't want to be responsible for killing something meant to live that long, do you? Oh, okay. I, I, I'll tell you what. I will give you my entire week's wages. It's everything I have. You can buy something far more fun with that. 
What do you think? Should we sell it? Why not? The thing's half dead anyway. Mm, let's take his money to town. I'm hungry. Poor thing. I wonder if it is true that you live for a thousand years or more. Maybe you are still young and have 900 years yet to live. Those children scarred your shell a bit. But you're going to be okay. Have a safe journey home, friend. He placed the turtle at the water's edge. And the turtle was able to regain its strength and make its way back into the sea. As it was swimming away, it seemed as though the turtle kept looking back at him. And this made Taro very happy. Finally, it dove under a wave and disappeared into the green and blue sea, leaving only a thin stream of silver bubbles behind it. Another day has gone past, and it looks like I will have no fish and no money. I don't think I will get to eat tonight. Something caught Taro's eye over the horizon. Something was disturbing the water and making its way towards his boat. As it approached, he saw that it was a large sea turtle with a scar on its shell coming closer and closer. Good evening, Taro. Do you remember me? I have been out to sea for too long. <laughs> Taro, do you remember me? Yes. You are the turtle from the shore yesterday. Yes, I am the same turtle. I have come to thank you for saving me. Oh, um, you're welcome. I couldn't stand to see those children be so cruel. I've never been so frightened. I thought I had seen my last day. I can imagine. Well, would you like to climb into my boat and sun yourself? I know you turtles like to do that sometimes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I am the messenger of Ryujin, dragon king of the sea. Your selfless act has made you a great ally of the undersea world, and we wish to reward you. I would like to take you to see our home, the island where summer never dies. Where is the island where summer never dies? Deep below the crashing waves, over the trench to the center of the earth, and next to the caves of Cerulean Crystal. Oh, it's the most beautiful place in the universe. I can't wait to show it to you. Did you say beneath the crashing waves? As in, underwater. <laughs> well, of course. The king of the sea must be in the sea to be king. I would love to go with you. It sounds like the wonderful places I used to dream about as a young boy. But I am just a man and cannot breathe underwater. If you trust me and believe that I will not let you drown, you will not drown. Taro, do you trust me? Yes. Yes, I trust you. Do you believe that I will not let you drown? Yes, I do believe. <laughs> then I'm ready to take you with me. That is, if you wish to go. Yeah, I, yes, I, I do wish. <laughs> then come, join me. Taro couldn't believe what was happening to him. He 
could breathe, see and hear just as well as he could on land. And it was wonderful. Fishes of all sizes, shapes and colors swirled around his head, while seaweed and anemones grew like flowers on the seafloor. Taro couldn't believe he had been sitting in his boat on top of such wonders for his entire life. He loved the feeling of weightlessness as the gentle currents nudged him here and there. The two traveled a great distance, deep below the crashing waves, over the trench to the center of the earth, and past the cave of cerulean crystal. Until at last, Taro saw a large gate in a clearing surrounded by endless forests of dancing kelp and sea grass. This really must be the most beautiful place in the universe. It's just like you said, Turtle. Turtle? Where did you go? Greetings, Taro. I am Ryujin, Dragon King of the Sea. Now please, don't bow to me. I must bow to you for saving the life of my messenger. It was nothing, sir. I was happy to do it. Nothing deserves to be treated the way she was treated by those children. Everyone's future is always someone else's past. Thanks to your, thanks to your kindness. Hime, both of our futures may include my daughter. Good evening, Taro. I'm Hime, daughter and messenger to Ryujin. You will not recognize me now, but I am the turtle that you rescued. I wish that you would stay here with us. I wish that you would tell me stories of your life on land, and I wish that you would take me as your wife. Taro was overwhelmed. The simple fisherman could never have imagined the beauty and fascination that was all around him. But all of it put together could not equal the beauty and fascination that stood right in front of him. Taro, do you wish to marry me? Yes, I, I do wish. <laughs> May you have many happy days here. Taro began his new life in an astonishing world that just yesterday he never would have imagined even existed. Every day held some new wonder. Sometimes it was a pearl too large to hold with only one hand, and the light shining from that pearl could illuminate the entire room. Other days, a squid or an octopus would follow behind him like a cat or a puppy would on land. <laughs> One day, the princess took him by the hand and led him through the palace to a large window overlooking broad fields. Look! The farmers are planting the fields just like they do on land! Yes, but with one important difference. Not long after the seed is planted, it sprouts. Not long after it sprouts, it becomes fully grown. And not long after that, the crop is ready for harvest. Uh, well, everything happens so quickly here. It's like a whole year passes in a day. One day followed another. And whether it was real or not, I couldn't tell. But each day was the new happiest day of his life. However, one day as he was walking along, came across the remnants of an old fishing net. Taro remembered his days as a fisherman on land, but he didn't think much of it after that. As time went on, he thought of that old fishing net a little more every day. Nostalgia has the devious ability to create dreams when you are awake, and in no time, it had filed down the rough edges of his past and had seduced him into want. I have noticed that you look thoughtful, almost sad lately. 
No, it is nothing. Everything is perfect. If everything is perfect, then where is your liveliness? You have changed and your mind has been elsewhere. Does something here bother you? No, no, it's nothing like that at all. Yes, I have found myself thinking of my father and mother. They are old, and I wonder if I'll ever see them again. It's Taro. I, I never said goodbye to them. I, I just went out fishing like I always do, and I never returned. They must be wondering what happened to me. They must think that I drowned at sea. He may. I, I need to go see them. No, please. You can't leave. If you do, I fear you won't return. Of course, I will return would never leave you. I just, I need to go and see my family to let them know I'm alive. I need to give them a proper farewell. You don't understand. I wish you would reconsider. He may. <coughs> How would your father have felt if you never returned from that beach? That must be how my parents are feeling right now. <coughs> If you wish to leave, I cannot keep you here. Go if you must, but please take this with you. Take this box and keep it with you always. <coughs> it will help you return to me. But you must never open it. <coughs> what is in the box? It is too difficult to explain, but it cannot be more important. Please, promise me you will never open the box. Do you understand? I will keep it with me, and I will never open it. But now I have to go. I will miss all the corals and the creatures, but most of all, We'll miss you. Please, I promise. I will return to you soon. Goodbye, Taro. Remember always that I love you. As soon as she had kissed him, he may knew the time had come. She wanted to spend more time with him, but she did not want him to see her cry. And sea turtles do not cry. <laughs> Soon, Taro would see his old home once again. He took a deep breath and remembered how much he had missed the sea air. But he couldn't help the feeling that something was different. so cold. It's never been so cold. Nothing felt right. Regardless, he set off and made his way towards his home, or at least where his home used to be. It's gone. Where's the house? Where are all the houses? Not so much can change in three months. Sir, could you tell me if the parents of Taro still live here? Who are you, stranger? I am Taro. Liar! What a mean spirit and trick to play on an old man like me. Taro's been gone for nearly a hundred years. A hundred years? I've only been gone three months. Now there is a name I haven't heard for a very long time. <laughs> I remember Taro scolded me for, for something. I can't remember what. It was only five or six at the time. You should be ashamed of yourself. You want Taro's family. They're in their new home, in the graveyard. What kind of nightmare is this? Overwhelmed. Taro turned and made his way back to the shore. With every step, he saw changes, and it proved the old man.
man was right. He thought back to standing in the great sea palace. And he remembered. Everything, everything happened so quickly in the sea kingdom. It's like a whole year on land passes in a day. I have nothing here. Everyone I know and love is gone. I need to return to my wife. He stared out over the endless ocean and realized that he had been in such a hurry to leave, he had forgotten to ask he made exactly what he should do to return. He placed his head in the water to see if he could still breathe. <coughs> but he only choked. Until he remembered. The box! He may set the box but help me return to her. But how? Well, whatever it is must be inside. Oh, I promised I would never open it. The secret to this nightmare has to be within this box. Empty for a thin white mist that rose up out of the box and blew across the sea toward the island where summer never dies. All at once, Taro felt worn, tired, and weak. His bright eyes grew dim. His hands began to shake. His hair turned to white and his strong legs withered and bent. What is happening to me? Cold, salty gust struck his face. And with it, Taro thought he heard the sad voice of the princess. lost in the sound of the waves crashing at the old man's feet. 